Jeanette, I love you so much. Your kisses make me melt like ice cream in the sun. Poppy Commando Second Blood is a new game for the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive, released right at the end of 2020. The game is a top-down running gun and a sequel to the original Poppy Commando, which, along with Sacred Line Genesis, was one of two Sega Genesis games published by Watermelon. Yes, that's the same watermelon behind Pure Solar and... <sighs> Paprium. I just can't get rid of that name now, can I? Anyway, I actually missed the original launch of Poppy Commando as well as Sacred Line Genesis. Let's just say I didn't have a lot of money back then. So as a result, I actually have never played the original. Because of that, I have no idea which new gameplay elements were added from the previous title. So do take that into consideration as I'm reviewing this. I should also point out that this copy was sent to me by Broke Studio for review purposes. Anyway, the game comes in a Mega Drive style box. And I gotta be honest, I actually really dig this cover. It bears mentioning that the characters of Poppy and Mommy are supposed to be parodies. So seeing them in this ultra violent comic book style cover is actually pretty hilarious. And fits the tongue in cheek nature of the title. I mean, you are literally playing as a grandpa and grandma. Inside, we find the cartridge and the European horizontal style manual. The manual is quite nice, being printed in a high quality paper and featuring a lot of in-game sprites and gameplay descriptions. The cartridge is also modeled after an original Mega Drive cart, except for once again the well-familiar notch on the side, which ensures compatibility across all Sega Genesis or Mega Drive models. The back of the cartridge is incredibly similar to the real thing. All that's missing is the Sega logo, which they cannot insert for legal reasons. One thing I did notice though, is that the plastic feels different from the official ones. I can't quite put my finger on it, but it's a little less smooth than the real thing. I don't mean this as a problem, just that it feels different. Overall, this is a pretty nice packaging. It doesn't come with any extras, but what it does, it does well. Booting up the game, you are quickly introduced to the story. Basically, Poppy and Mommy love their Comostrat 64, which was stolen by the evil C++ organization. Ah yes, the true enemy of all computers. Programmers. With your computer stolen, it's now up to you to get it back. You start in a Super Mario-like overworld, though these are much more linear as you can really only go forward or backward. Once you select a level, you're told what type of enemy you'll be fighting, given the objective for the stage, and off you go. Now, I previously stated that the game is a top-down shooter, which yes, technically it is. But it's also kind of odd. You see, in this game, you have a limited supply of bullets. And if you're not careful, you'll run out faster than you think. So this means that you'll actually spend most of the game taking down enemies with a knife and only resorting to using guns when you're either in a bind, low on health, or during a boss fight. The problem with this is that your knife literally has no reach. I mean, look at this. You have to be right on top of them. And the art style doesn't help either. Everyone has these large heads, but a hit will only connect if you aim at their body. So I would often end up using my melee attack too soon or not aiming it properly. I really wish the knife gave you more leeway, because going around almost every level taking out your foes like this is, um, not very fun. Now granted, when you take out enemies, they'll usually drop coins, which can be used to buy upgrades as well as ammo. You also get bonus bullets for dispatching several enemies in a short amount of time and for completing the level. So given all this, you'd think you'd never run out of ammo, right? Well, actually, no. Yes, there are lots of ways to gain ammo. 
but they only ever give you small amounts. Not all enemies will drop items, and when they do drop ammo, it can be anywhere between 5 and 25 bullets, and completing a level will only give you 20 bullets, which is not a whole lot, but I'd say it's on the verge of being doable. No, the issue starts with the bosses. Basically, you'll fight trucks, armor trucks, and even tanks. And these take a ton of hits. Not to mention, they keep spawning regular enemies which can quickly swarm you. So you have to juggle all these foes, the offensive armored vehicle, and the low ammo count. So, uh, yeah, it's not easy. And it doesn't help that your knife does not work against any vehicles. If you run out of bullets during one of these stages, you'll just have to farm enemies for more bullets. Throughout your gameplay, you'll also find a few power-ups flying around. Though it seems only one appears per level, and it's always the exact same one for that level. You get armor-piercing ammo, which allows you to dispatch several foes with just one bullet. Freeze will momentarily freeze all regular foes, but is useless against vehicles. And you also get speed and double shot. Honestly, out of all of these, I'd say only speed and double shot are worth your trouble. Double shot is only useful for the bosses, as I would avoid using them against regular foes so as to not waste ammo. And speed, because your character is really, really really slow, so having a speed upgrade is super useful. Sometimes I would get a power-up or a message on the screen and I wouldn't even be able to read it, because it would disappear instantly. I'm not entirely sure, but I think this happens every time one of these airplanes flew by. Maybe they're both using the same layer? Not really sure. Once you complete a level, you can progress to the next stage on the world map, but occasionally you'll find a small detour which leads into a shop. Once there, you can either buy ammo, new weapons, or some sorely needed upgrades for the weapons you already have. But sadly, even this had some problems. For one thing, I feel as though every item is super expensive. It feels like the game is designed to force you to repeat levels so you can grind for more cash and then finally pick up a new weapon or upgrade. At least on some levels, you can usually find a place to camp and just take out enemies until you have enough money. Another issue is that you can only carry with you 4 items at a time, 2 of which are already occupied by your knife and starting gun, and as far as I can tell, there's no way to remove or sell your starting equipment. And yes, even the upgrades to your starting weapons will take up a slot. Now, some of these upgrades are rather nice. I like the one that increased the range of your starting gun, something which was super useful against bosses and armored vehicles. I also got an upgrade that supposedly increases the range of your knife. But, I mean, are you noticing any range increase? Cause I'm sure not. How much does this increase the range for anyway? 5%? That's not a knife, that's a spoon! I see you've plied knifey spoony before. Oh, and to top it all off, if you die, you'll lose some of your score, some of the money you've collected so far, and all your upgrades. So yes, if that happens, you're going to have to grind all over again. Not to mention that as you progress through the zones, you become locked out of the previous areas, and different worlds will have different stores with different items. Look, I'm not trying to be harsh on this game. Really, I know this game was created by just one person, and the fact that we're getting a new Mega Drive game at all is really cool. But the issue is... I'm just not feeling this one. Now, as I've mentioned before, each level features a specific task or mission that needs to be accomplished. Sometimes you just have to survive for half a minute, or you might need to dispatch a certain number of enemies. Other times, you're required to salvage a part of your stolen combo strat 64, or take out a boss. It's all pretty standard, but it is kinda weird how you can finish most of the early levels in like 30 seconds or less. 
Graphically, the game is pretty simple. It has a cartoony art style that fits well with the tongue and cheek theme. And the enemy designs are pretty varied. From soldiers, to security agents, to a certain faction whose name the algorithm won't let me say. But with that said, from a technical standpoint, I'd argue Papi Commando is just average. Maybe even below that. You'll see some smart use of color here and there, but nothing that would really impress you. So if you're the type to gush about stuff like parallax scrolling layers, or seeing the Sega Genesis being pushed to its limits, this isn't for you. It also does not help that there doesn't seem to be any visual variety here. The game boasts 100 levels, though personally, level 30 was as far as I could make it. And they all had this desert camp aesthetic, and it never really progressed from there. The soundtrack is also a bit of a hit or miss scenario. There aren't a whole lot of songs in this game, and there's also one or two that I'm just not that into. But I will say that I really enjoyed a couple of tracks, especially one that kind of sounds like funk done on the Sega Mega Drive sound chip. I also find it odd that the only way you can play as Mami is with a second player. Why not just let me choose which character I want to play from the start? Also, for some reason, she does not have a knife attack. So once I ran out of bullets, that was that. I was stuck with no way to progress. Unless, of course, the other player saves you. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the game. There really isn't a whole lot to it. I get that the game was made by just one person. And not every modern Genesis title needs to be Paprium, Tanglewood or Xeno Crisis. But, at the same time, the indie Mega Drive scene has evolved so much over the years and there are so many promising projects around the corner that this just kind of ends up falling a little by the wayside. Overall, I'm a bit sad to say that I did not enjoy Papi Commando's Second Blood as much as I hoped for. From a technical standpoint, it's nothing particularly impressive. But the game's biggest problem is the gameplay. Forcing players to spend half the time using a knife with zero reach just so you don't get stuck on a boss is simply not fun. The game has a series of mechanics that seem to be punishing the player while offering very little reward for being so frugal. Even when you do get powerful guns or upgrades, you'll run out of ammo before you know it. Not to mention, having to grind for all your upgrades can also get a little grating, especially when you lose every weapon and enhancement after you die even once. Regardless of how I feel about it, if the game seems interesting to you, you can get it from BrokeStudio.fr, who have this game up for sale, as well as Arcagus Revolution, and even several NES indie titles. So there's definitely a reason to check out their website, and I'll be sure to leave a link in the description. But as for me, I wanted to enjoy this game, I really did, and I feel bad for being so harsh on a small passion project. But sadly, Papi Commando's Second Blood is just not for me. Hey everyone, thank you for watching Sticky's Retro Corner. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell and share this video. All that fun social media stuff. And you can also support me on Patreon. It may not seem like it, but even one dollar is a really big help in keeping this channel going. I'd also like to thank my newest Patreon supporters. Big Nate H. Student and Christopher Phillips. Anyway, I hope you have a great day. Bye! <laughs>